Hey guys, Desler Magic here, and Mark Rosewater said something stupid on the internet. You know, I'm thinking about dropping the Hey guys, it's Desler Magic and just making that second part the intro to all my videos. But this time, wow, this is one of the stupidest things he's ever said. And I wouldn't quite go as far as saying, well, I've never seen the magic community this angry because, you know, people get caught cheating and it looks like they stole $300,000 in prize money from the community. There were some comments about that. But, like, on the main subreddit, the mods have clearly just given up. So many people are so mad, they're just like, we're going to stop covering for Watsy and saying, you're a troll, your opinion isn't welcome here. No, they're just allowing just about anything. And if you take, like, China and, and their propaganda and government controls on speech and then mix it with, like, the Nazis and then mix it with North Korea, you would be scratching the surface of how the mods run that place, at least historically. To them, Magic the Gathering is a religion. If you say anything bad about it, you are literally the worst person on the planet. But now it's just like, you know what? Clearly they're wrong. Clearly the game's going in a bad, you know, direction. We're just going to let people talk. So someone asked a question on Mark Rosewater's god-awful blog. It was not a serious question, and I'm still undecided about whether or not he knew that. I'm leaning towards no. Mark gets really offended when people insult his stupid design choices, his stupid products, and his stupid things that he's excited about that the community is wholly rejected. Uh, he went on a 19-hour tweet storm Twitter rampage when he was finally forced by the community. To, he was, like, cornered by them. And he was forced to admit that Companion was terrible. It was inherently terrible. It was mathematically flawed. It, starting the game with a guaranteed 8th card that's a combo piece was idiotic. And he had been trying to gaslight people and defend it for, like, 48 hours before that. So finally he just gave up and just went ballistic. I made a video on it, but this time, well, it's short and sweet because, well, he just responded, but l let's just read it. I don't want to keep you in suspense. The Uninvited Ghost, which that's the best used name ever considering what he wrote, uh, put, If I open a pack of magic and get a Transformers card, can I exchange it for a real magic card through customer service? Let's just start with, was that a real question or was that like a, like a backhanded, you know, sarcastic, you know, whatever you'd call it, you know? It may have been a real question of like, okay, I've got the Transformers one. You guys said that in about six months, you'll add to the list at a prevalence of 5X, I believe it is. Um, so set boosters only in standard, I think it was. Uh, an, an actual in-universe reprint of an out-of-universe, you know, universes beyond card. That That is what they said they will do from now on. But they also absolutely guaranteed the community that they'd give away five free levels, so 5,000 XP, every single arena mastery pass, and they have not done that. So this would not be the first time that they lied and just said, oh, well, we changed our mind, which they have got to start getting sued for stuff like this or have the, the FTC go after them. Hi, editing Des here. Hate to interrupt, but Gavin Verhey just confirmed there are no plans to print in-universe Transformers cards. So, um, yeah, that went out the window pretty quick. I guess that was correct. Back to the video. So is that what they meant? Like, hey, if I got a Transformers one and I hold on to it because I like the card, but I don't want a freaking Transformer in my commander deck, can I trade it in uh, through like kind of like the warranty exchange program, I think is what they're referring to, uh, through customer service. So you contact customer service if you have a damaged or misprinted card and you're like, this is valuable, I want a real one. Or I got a whole bad pack, I got a whole bad box. Here, I'll send you the 50 bad cards, you send me the real ones. So they have an enormous amount of singles in reserve to replace the cards. So that could have been what he was referring to, but this could have just been like, hey, I don't want this garbage, so I'm going to ask, like, a serious-sounding question. So whether he was serious or, or whether he wasn't, Mark Rosewater appears to think that he was, but he completely just made this about something else. And just dropped some, like, angry, you know, snippy little, ooh, don't do this, you're wrong. So here is the reply that absolutely shook the internet. A note to everyone. Please don't use, double quotes, real to differentiate between magic th uh, magic cards that you play and magic cards that other people play. It's gatekeeping. Oh, there is that word that the left loves so much. And it's exclusionary. Everyone can play the way they enjoy, and it's just as real a game of magic as how you play. Let me summarize most of the upvoted comments on Reddit discussing this, where he doesn't have control over it and people are, I hate to say this, but a little bit more based in reality than his stupid blog, although some of the comments on his blog are gems too. 
And I mean, it's the internet. I'm sure somebody said, yeah, send them to me. I'll trade them. In fact, if you send me your RuneScape rune armor, I will return you a gilded one. Uh, I have level 169 crafting and I can add gold trim to your armor if you trade it to me. I definitely won't just run off with it. So yeah, everybody send me your transformer cards anyway. The more serious comments were, it is not gatekeeping if I don't want this crap in my Magic the Gathering universe because it's not in my Magic the Gathering universe. I don't want Transformers and Walking Dead characters, which that show sucked, in my game that has like famous characters that were in multiple books. Lore spanning 30 years, serious characters, actual stories. Some people like goblins, some people like snakes, some people like druids, some people like elves. People who play elf tribal should be locked up, but that's besides the point. If I don't want to sit down and play Magic the Gathering with Magic the Gathering characters and have Daryl from The Walking Dead show up, then that's my preference, okay? I'm not telling other people they can't play it. Everybody across the board said, if you want to play with this because you love that, you love Transformers, you love you know, crossover week at the Renaissance fair where you get the, the space aliens showing up, then that's on you. But don't, don't shove it in my face. Don't make it show up to my table in my game and having them make it legal. That's not cool. At this point, the damn uncards are more legitimate. And don't even get me started about the uncards and the lack of seriousness and the stupid mechanics and putting stickers on crap. And people put so many examples of how unbelievably wrong it is. Like on his own blog, somebody put, if I see an episode of Game of Thrones where Batman punches a dragon, I'm going to say that's not real Game of Thrones. Hell, if somebody writes a fanfic like that, because you know that's out there. And somebody comments, what a great, creative, interesting idea. And somebody else comments, this is stupid. Why would you do that? You should draw the line at, you shouldn't have written that. Nobody should enjoy it. And this shouldn't exist. Okay, that's, that's going way too far. That would be kind of gatekeeping? I don't know. I just call it generally being a dick. I mean, gatekeeping is like, oh, I play this game and I don't want kids playing it. I don't want old people playing it. I don't want women playing it. I don't want poor people near this thing that I enjoy. I don't want rich people near our poor people thing. Oh, that's my city's culture. That's my skin color's culture. Nobody else should be allowed to have that. Oh, chess is an intellectual game. We don't want children playing it. You know, stuff like that. Golf is for rich people. There shouldn't be cheap, you know, $10 golf courses out there. I don't want to see them in my game because my game is prestigious. You know, that's gatekeeping. That is like textbook definition gatekeeping. And to the left and to these whiny idiots and these arrogant Seattle morons, gatekeeping has lost all meaning. It's it's right up there with just, you're racist. I mean, other birds, they just straight up put it. Uh... I don't care if universes beyond cards exist or if they count as real or not. I'm just not interested in MTG as a game that features a constant influx of outside IP crossover merchandise. There you go. Cheap, stupid tie-ins. Oh, look, this movie character from the stupid Pixar thing is now in a McDonald's toy and it's on a shirt at Walmart. Great. Like, nobody likes that. It's cheap, it's tacky, it's stupid, and it, it is the most transparent money grab you will ever see. It cheapens the brand and it pisses people off. And well, here it is. It's simmering over. He made this comment and people are like, immediate backlash. Universal across the board. I can't see one person that said, yes, you're right. If I want to play, you know, with a transformer in my artifact deck with my play group, they should have to sit there and deal with it and not make a single comment about it because what I want is more important than what they want. Once again, that's not reverse gatekeeping. That's being an asshole. So people were memeing on this kind of hard, but like, not in like a, oh, I don't care about this haha ha controversy. They're like taking shots at him. Like somebody said, my bet's on Star Wars, complete with a black border bedazzling mechanic. That's right. You're going to get out your little bedazzling gun and you're going to have to add little rhinestones to your cards and those will count as charge counters and that'll be in vintage. Yes, you have to put holes through your black lotus, through the sleeve, and permanently attach gems to it. And you're not allowed to say you don't like it because that's gatekeeping. If I want to pull out some glitter and glue and glue six of your cards together in your vintage deck, Watsy said that it's legal. So you're going to have to let me do that. They made that an official mechanic in the future, obviously. Clearly, that's the direction they're going. I mean, they already brought back Meld and they're doing stickers. You tell me they won't have you glue cards together physically and then make that a standard legal thing. Obviously, I'm exaggerating, being a bit hyperbolic, being a little... Well, jumping on the bandwagon, dumping on Watsy, but, you know, they deserve it. I'm glad after, like, nine years of running this channel that people in the community are finally getting a clue 
that standard and the power level and the abusive card printing practices and everything that Watsy does is terrible and that the game's going in a negative direction. People were in denial. They were like, oh, you're just angry for the sake of being angry. And now, well, look who was right in the end. And if you think so too, subscribe because there's more coming. Why don't I bash them as hard as I did in the past? Because it was still salvageable back then. At this point, I am so checked out and do not give a crap. And have you seen the performance of my other four channels? That's all I got to say. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to continue covering this. I'll convert this to, I guess at this point, a second gaming channel or a general TCG channel or an MTG, you know, play whatever you want from the past free for all channel. I don't care. I, I, I am not going anywhere, but also uh, it, it would appear that their customers did not have the same opinion as me on that because, um, they gone. So I made some more sentiments like, I don't want this crap on arena. I, you know, then it's forced. I, I can't control who I play against and what's legal. I think nothing from universe is beyond is on arena, but people are already starting that because we know damn well what direction they're going. If they can sell anything to anyone on any platform to make five cents, they will do it. They do not care about the long-term health of the game or more people quitting. They want money in the short term, and when it gets bad enough, they jump ship and go to a different company. That is how corporate America works for publicly owned companies. So, I mean, people were saying, well, then get rid of the reserve list, Mark. It's gatekeeping. I mean, they're throwing it back in his face with so many, like, it's hypocritical or, like, equally bad examples to be sarcastic, you know, typical internet humor, but... Uh, it's really just like the same comment over and over and over. Universe is beyond. Fine, whatever. If I want to buy it, I'll buy it intentionally, but I don't want them in a booster that I, it's not the product I'm buying. Who the hell is like, I love Standard and I love Transformers. Let's go. Nobody. Let me just read the statement from this very upvoted post from uh, Amphetadex, it looks like is your username. If you don't want people complaining about Transformers cards as not being real magic cards so much... Maybe don't put them in booster packs for a non-Transformers product. Sincerely, a player who's not getting a box she would have otherwise. As in, they're boycotting this, not buying this. Another comment, this is a problem entirely of their own making. They can't instigate all of this, pushing the envelope entirely too far, which, yeah, that's the last three years. Uh, then hold the high ground finger wagging at the inevitable backlash if and when people don't like it. What do you mean you don't like cheap corporate stupid tie-ins from little, you know, niche things shoved in your face in your standard product? You know what the worst part about this is? We still don't know who's paying who in what direction or if it's neutral. Let me explain that. Now, in this case, it's a bad example. Hasbro owns Transformers. Hasbro owns Watsy. They're not paying anything. But for The Walking Dead, okay, that's like AMC or whatever. Did they pay a licensing fee to make official... Walking Dead merch, which is what you would usually do if you just want to throw it on a t-shirt or like a backpack or something. And then they thought they could make it up with like, whoa, name brand stuff. Or did Walking Dead pay them to like promote the show and say, here, put this in your product. Or was it neutral where they're like, we'll both benefit. Let's just do like, like a collaboration together and nobody needs to exchange money. We'll hype up your show because there's new and launching. The, the timing on this was when some new Walking Dead series came out, I think. And then we'll sell more because it's like a collectible thing. We'll sell it to our main people, but then we'll also sell it to them. So we should both benefit. Let's, let's just get together and do it. If they were paying to license that, they are the stupidest damn company ever. You are never going to go positive on that. That is impossible. And as a percentage, take a guess if like AMC or whatever is going to do a deal with you again. No, they are not. Now, there's a little leeway where it's like, oh, if we made, you know, this secret layer with 10 different artworks, we had to pay the artists. You know, that's 10 pieces of art, probably paying them between like two and 10,000. And if it's like a famous, famous, well-known artist, you know, who knows? Well, if we're going to pay the artist anyway, we might as well just take some screenshots or hire the artist from, you know, the Walking Dead's legal entity. Have them send over the art and then we'll pay a licensing fee equivalent to whatever it was. And, and usually also it's a safe percentage with maybe a flat fee. So, hey, you let us put this on the card, supply us with everything, we'll work it out. We will just give you 20% of all the sales of this. Because then it scales. If it explodes, they make money. And if it doesn't, then, you know, they still make money. But then they don't, like, say, oh, we're paying a million dollars to license this one song for this one thing, you know. And then, like, you put it in a Hollywood movie and it does terrible. Flat fees are really bad. Percentages can be bad because that's how George Lucas made so damn much money on Star Wars. And I'm sure the studios regret that, but... At the same time, it got done and it all scales. Like, oh no, we paid him, you know, X amount of $100 million because he's taken, you know, 10, 20% of all merch sales and all ticket sales. Oh no, that's so much money. What, you're still making the 80%?
So if you make a billion dollars, that's a lot of money. If a movie makes $20 million and you paid $10 million to Tom Cruise, you're an idiot. If you promised him dead-ass nothing up front and said this be- movie better actually be good, we're giving you 10% the end, then if it does well, you pay him a lot, but that's fine, you win, you make a ton of money, and if it does terrible, you're not out a ton of money. So that's why commission business deals are usually how licensing works. Usually. But like I said, there's also mutually beneficial stuff. So what is the nature of these is the question. We've had MLP tie-ins before. We've had D&D tie-ins. We've had uh, Hasbro-owned property tie-ins. They're all Hasbro-owned. I believe they own MLP. They own G.I. Joe. They own Power Rangers. So those two are guaranteed in the future, by the way. And people are saying Marvel, but boy, are they greedy, especially lately when their movies are doing terrible. You want to know why Amazon-owned Twitch just, you know, went to a 50-50 instead of a 70-30 on their top creators? Because they got to pay for the, like, billion dollars they wasted on the Lord of the Rings series. When a company starts doing poorly, like Hasbro, they go to their piggy banks and they go to their non-profitable wings and say, we got to step it up. We got to actually take this seriously and make up for this or our stock owners are, 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 are just going to destroy us. You know, kind of like Hasbro going to Watsy and treating them like a piggy bank, for example. So these universes beyond things, I mean, the Warhammer 40k one, that is selling so insanely well. Or I don't even know if it's out yet because I don't give a crap. I don't know if it's pre-orders or post-sales or scalpers or I doubt any of them have been like delivered. But if you think that after the hype and the sales numbers and the secondary market prices that they're not going to do another product tie-in after the success of 40k, even though Walking Dead pretty much flopped from what I heard? Yeah, no. They found borderless lands to be like the most valuable thing in in what the first unset, maybe the second one and definitely the first Zendikar. And so they brought it back for BFZ and fat pack sold for like $90 expeditions. The first lands in that set. You think they're not going to do that again? They literally just turned around and did that again with the transformers cards. Oh, don't forget the um, upcoming, uh, I think it's Brothers War, the serialized ones. So they, they brought masterpieces back, okay? And expeditions were masterpieces. They did them for a while, they ran out of good cards, they burned it out, and then they stopped. And then they're like, hey, that was money, we should do that again. And then they brought it back in a different form. Just like uh, From the Vault, oh, well, we don't do From the Vault anymore. And then they do Signature Spellbook Jace Edition, also known as From the Vault. And then they do Secret Layers, or as I like to call it, Mythic Edition. Isn't that what they called that product? It was a while ago. They did three failed, horribly failed releases. One on eBay, one on their own website, and one on a third-party website that actually kind of worked eventually. Or first-party, whatever. They finally fixed it, kind of. And then they just turned it into Secret Layers. Because as much of a disaster as it was, they still made money on it. And if they make money, what they do is they justify it with, one, we need money, and two... Well, so there's loudly complaining people, but they don't have to buy it. Who cares? And the, the re- that brings me back to why people are so mad right now. Now you're bringing it into our world, okay? This isn't some stupid fringe collectible reskin. Oh, I don't care about that artist. I don't care about that series. I don't care about that tie-in. But they're just reprints of old cards. It's a collector's edition. People leave them on their shelves. I don't care. It's not in my game, in my standard product, at my FNM, at my table, playing Commander. Well, now it is. I want to see... Those absolute cowards, those greedy, self-interested cowards that run the commander ban list and the commander committee or whatever the hell else, just come out and say, no, we're not just going to be Watsy ass kisser puppets anymore who just agree with them on everything and just let them run everything because, oh, what if they take our power away? Then we wouldn't be able to, allegedly, but come on, insider trade and unban Protean Hulk so that the head of the committee can run his Protean Hulk deck. And they should just tell everybody... We have made the decision based on community feedback and our own experience of what's healthiest for, you know, the format and all this, that we are banning all universes beyond cards from Commander permanently. The community has already rejected it, okay? There is no market for this. Nobody is allowing this crap in their Commander games. If you want WotC to stop doing something, stop buying it. It's plain and simple. But they would just be fast-forwarding the clock and saying, you know what? Within a couple of years, you're going to stop doing this because of backlash, because people are eventually going to stop buying it. People are going to stop playing over it. And people are going to stop buying the products that have it in it. They know that if they make an unset, they cannot prop it up with just pretty little shiny borderless lands. Because like I said before, they have played that all the way into the ground. If there is no ongoing anything that's just this fun little side thing, like plane chase and like Arch Enemy, which have historically sold terribly, unfortunately, because they're really fun, but hey. The board game that they made, a a couple other things, that it's not worth doing, 
Okay, they used to love these little side projects that just kind of sold, okay, these little pet projects that they put a couple people in charge of. But now, they're like, no, we have to be profitable. And it's all Hasbro's fault. 100% their fault. They keep hitting up WotC for more money because nothing else that Hasbro is doing is making money right now. They made terrible business decisions. They hired all their family members and unqualified idiots to run the company. And then they said, well, this acquisition will look good. Let's run up literally like $11 billion in debt, I think was the number. Let's acquire a studio. Eh, let's cancel the movie. Well, let's acquire G.I. Joe. Well, let's not like do anything with it. Let's acquire Power Rangers. We, we might be able to do like a game and a, well, I guess we didn't get around to that. They just blindly buy things and it, it's like an idiot who lied on their resume and then shows up and pretends they know how to do the job, except they're running a multi-billion dollar company. Hasbro has always been run by absolute morons, at least for the last couple decades that I've heard. They're out of touch, they have no business sense, and they still run the place like tyrants don't listen to anyone. It's just like my old boss at work, okay? You can phone it in and pretend that you know what you're doing as long as you listen to the people under you telling you how to do your job. If you're not going to listen to them either and everything you touch in every project is a train wreck, then you should just get the hell out. Because you are losing the company money and pissing people off and making people quit. Look, I could just be some Joe Schmo who invented something or got some money, bought a company, and then I'm playing CEO. As long as I have intelligent, expert people with experience under me that I can listen to, that make me look better. So I wanted to go all the way to the deepest possible origin of why this is happening, why it keeps happening, why Mark is defending it, why the staff is still doing this, why it's still, you know, it's selling but it's not, and why they're so desperate, and why they're driving the game off a cliff in the short term. I wanted to explain that just to give people the full picture. So once again, if you appreciate that, leave a like on the video, subscribe for more cool content like this. And in closing, I would suggest Mark just completely drop this. You gotta read the room. He likes to live in his own little ass kisser bubble on, on Twitter and his blog where, he, you know, 90% of the comments usually support his stuff. But we're getting to, like, companion levels where everyone is telling him this is bad. It's a bad take and he's wrong. He does rush his work, he does kind of bounce around kind of ADD, maybe he just kind of skimmed the question and pasted that in as like, oh, so you're saying other people shouldn't be able to enjoy it just because you don't like it? Like, maybe that's how he kind of read it, and then reading it a second time, he's like, oh, I guess that's not really what he meant to know people are mad, oops. And if you think he's going to come out and apologize, you don't know Mark Rosewater, and you don't know Seattle culture. It's either that, or since he's the company cheerleader, he does crap on some stuff that WotC does, like to the point where you, you wonder why they keep him around. I'm sure he's pissed some people off there, but he likes to come out and occasionally just tell the truth about something where he's like, yeah, I don't like this either. But there are other employees there that do that a lot more. He really does toe the company line the majority of the time, and he gets to downright like delusional level if it's something that he created that people don't like. He will defend that until he is forced to not. So my thinking is he knows the financial state of the company, the stock price, which, oh boy, it ain't looking good. It is down almost 18% on the year. 28% down on the five year in case you thought this was just a little COVID dip. Uh, I guess if you want to go back far enough, it's up quite a bit since 1989. But this graph is not adjusted for inflation. For example, okay. Hasbro stock price on like right around January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, around there, the beginning of the year, this year was like 103 bucks. It is now sitting at $67.42. The only reason that that doesn't look like about a 40-50% drop is because technically October 4th, 2021, it was only $86. So it went up and then it just absolutely nosedived, double digit percentages and then some. So I think they had an all-hands meeting and some Hasbro people coming in where they're like, hey, we need to turn this around and we're losing Magic subscribers and customers. Why could that possibly be? Does anybody know? And everybody's like, well, it's definitely not because we ruined Standard and drove everyone away with our politics. That's not it. And the power creep and the cheap tie-ins and constantly pissing everybody off and wallet fatigue and failure to do anything creative in the game and a failed MMO that we wasted millions on is definitely not that. Don't worry, we'll step it up, we'll double our effort, and the market gets out there and he's like, it's gatekeeping and exclusionary, just let people buy the products. Like, we, seriously, guy, we need people to buy these products, just shut up. Shut up about not buying the products. Do not tell one single human being on this planet not to buy this product because you don't like Transformers. Even though we shoved it in your face, put it in your standard product, and it's now in your favorite, most popular format, Commander. So ignore all that. It's gatekeeping and exclusionary if you tell people you don't like the not real magic cards. They are real magic cards, you guys. It's real to me, damn it. 
to me, this this doesn't look like he misinterpreted the question, even though he does it all the time. I think it's just towing the company line and being like, nah, I'm not going to be the one that says, sorry, guys, I don't like the direction either. We're going to reassess it. No, that's what a PR person would do. M Mr. Mark Rosewater, I'll say anything, you know, company cheerleader. He's coming out just making up absolute thinly veiled bullshit that people tore through on Reddit and on his own damn blog comment section. I mean, I guess I'll end with one, you know, it's upvoted over a hundred times comment on this original post on Reddit. This is what happens when you jeopardize your intellectual property in the relentless pursuit of short-term profits. You risk alienating pieces of your core market. So the fact that you're suddenly surprised is a bit hard to believe. I paraphrase that a little bit, but yeah. And if you don't realize this is the tip of the iceberg of them blaming us, the customers, for our actions, our attitudes, our statements online, for the complete and utter collapse of the game, the lower sales, the people abandoning arena, nobody playing standard, nobody buying half their sets anymore. If you think they're going to stop blaming us, they are going to start exclusively blaming us, blaming and shaming. That is all they do to deflect from their own egos and from just their own corporate image. It's sad. And people are going to tear them apart online. They think they can just like control the narrative and propaganda and market their way out of this. Uh, maybe in like 1990, we have this thing called the internet now and people on it don't tolerate any of that. But everyone they hired is some delusional blue haired nutcase who lives on Twitter. So shocker, they don't know how society works or how real people react to anything, or super old, out-of-touch people who don't know how anything in modern society works, and are unwilling to learn. So this is going to continue happening, and hopefully whatever financial collapse is coming for them results in them spinning them off, or a complete and utter bankruptcy of Hasbro. If you think, well, they're so big, they can't just fail overnight. <laughs> um, people are starting to catch on that they have a really bad reputation, and now the stock price has taken a dip in at least the last six months for sure pretty heavily. And now investors, instead of just reading the quarterlies and the press release and saying, yeah, big company equals safe. You guys are good. Look at this impressive acquisition. We're not going to scrutinize it closer. Now they're like getting out the magnifying glass and going, what the hell did I just invest in? What are you guys doing? What, why, why did your quarterlies look like this? Why did you change the definition of this category to make it look better? Why is everything across the board failing? Why did you do nothing with this? Why did you cancel this project? And they're just like, I'm out. If you mix low profits with people pulling out and a low stock price, you have nothing. And if you think that'll do good things to your credit rating as a company, so you can just go get a private equity loan when you're already a, pu a public company, you walk into a bank or go to a venture capitalist or some private investor and say, hey, we're looking for some money. They'll be like, you're a public traded company. Why the hell are you looking for private money? Wait, what? You're doing terrible. Uh, no. I'd rather blindly invest in some venture capital new thing where they're building like robot dogs or something. That's more likely to succeed than your spiraling, failing company that's on fire. So if you can't get financing and your assets dry up and all your debt goes negative, everything go on real estate and any liabilities, really, any expenses, if that starts going to the negative, you can't make your uh, payments, then you lose the last of your, your possible investors. A company can go from successful or like floating or neutral to just gone in like a year. Even a company this old, even a company this big, they will start to desperately sell off things. But if you think, oh, well, don't worry, we paid our debts and everything's good. We just sold off a billion dollar asset section of our company. If you think that's going to make the investors say, oh, everything's okay now, you are out of your damn mind. They got away with it with COVID. They're like, well, people aren't going to the movies or doing this or buying toys or doing collectibles because COVID. People are like, oh, okay, well, we'll let the stock dip. We'll let it ride. We'll, we'll double down. We'll buy the dip and we'll just wait because you'll recover. They should have looked closer. They should have looked at people who track Hasbro products and, and the major branches. Look, if you're going to invest multiple millions of dollars of like other people's pension funds into this company, you should maybe find people critical of them and see if they have a point, call them up, interview them, offer them some money, you know, on the ground PI stuff. I'm starting to think that like I could go get a boat loan and like Wells Fargo would scrutinize me a little bit heavier and look into my background and check if I'm legit more than people throwing like $500 million of stocks into Hasbro just based on some vapid BS third party report. Or, or like their own quarterlies, which are the biggest lies I've ever seen in my life. But that's most of corporate America. So yeah, this is the tip of the iceberg. It's gonna get really ugly. And I've said it even up until last year, or as late as last year. If you don't want your magic collection to be worth zero, if you care about the value of some cards, and you have something that you would consider an investment, or just 
a valuable trade binder, but you're not like in love with the cards. They're not in any decks. You don't need them in the future. Sell them or you're going to be left with nothing. I am telling you this. There is no scenario where this game doesn't collapse, at least in the short term. It could come back, but people have been saying that about like L5R for forever. If you're like, what's Legend of the Five Rings? What's L5R? Exactly. And I haven't heard anything about the Final Fantasy or the DBZ card games lately either. Maybe someone buys up WotC in the in the Hasbro bankruptcy proceedings and then that all goes it goes to court this that delay you're looking at one two three years then they turn it around and they they fire all the problem people they say what's really the root of the problem but usually scavenger investors will just pick up the pieces they're not like let's resurrect this it's a strong brand it's like let's liquidate this let's burn everything to the ground double up and then move on Okay, that's what, like, the vulture investors do. So that's the future of the game right now. That's why I'm hedging my bets. That's why I got a different job and I started more channels, okay? I ain't stupid. I am the first one in the lifeboat off the Titanic waving at everybody saying, ha ha, bye, shouldn't have hesitated. I wish Hasbro investors were that cautious. Hedge fund managers are the most clueless, fake, fronting idiots r right after, like, wine snobs and art critics, Okay. They're the biggest fakes and frauds. They don't know what they're doing, and they almost never outperform index funds. So that's who we're dealing with, and that's why the stability of everything top to bottom, from the customers to the people funding this to the, the corporate history of Hasbro, every single possible sign points to Hasbro and Watsi are in trouble, which means Magic's in trouble. And that goes both ways. Hasbro's in trouble because Magic's in trouble, and Magic's in trouble because Hasbro's in trouble. And... Hasbro will let Watsi go when Hasbro doesn't exist anymore or right around the same time that Gollum says, you know what, actually I don't need the ring. And all the crackheads down the street from me say, you know what, maybe I don't need to do crack and meth today. So it has been forever since I made like a little, you know, deep dive mini documentary kind of uh, style video, but I know you guys absolutely love these. And finally, there's a topic worth talking about to the deepest possible level. So shout out to everybody at the gym, all the truckers watching my content. I love you guys. And I, I wanted to make some more for you that isn't just visual only spoiler quick. Oh, here's a thing. Here's a news story. But I mean, I will say if you're into long form content and like me with happy, fun, productive anti-gloom and doom content uh check out my new channel emergency survival tips it's kind of like a prepper channel but it's not like paranoid you're gonna die tomorrow the government's out to get your raw craziness it's like here's this thing that'll let you light a fire better here's how you do first aid stuff here's how you do a lot of electronics heavy stuff actually turns out those are my best performing videos and i i got like almost 4k subs over there and some of my videos have 40,000 views so i could tell you where i'm putting in my effort but yeah, it is solid content from somebody who knows YouTube after 3,000 videos in nine years. So I cannot recommend it enough. I, I give it a, a top review, totally unbiased. But yeah, if you want to check it out, link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next crazy magic story.